months to make up for. I apologize. But here we go. Let me share a screen because this is so in line with tonight. Hold on one second. Here we go. I'm going to make it larger and I'm going to hit play. Make sure that you get your phones, please. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right. Here we go. All right. Pay attention to this, y'all. What if I told you Christianity is bigger than you think, bigger than the street signs, the end times, and evolution's missing link? Christianity is not about going to heaven when you die, but about bringing heaven to earth while you're alive. Because when Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, he was talking about the here and now, not just something soon to come. See, life is like a race that can feel really long, but heaven isn't the finish line, it's the ground we're running on. Because heaven starts now. It's not just some paradise in the distance, but why do we treat it like we're waiting for a new toy on Christmas? Christianity is not just about being saved from sin. God wants to reveal the kingdom of heaven within. It's not about getting raptured to the sky, but about living your life with purpose and not just standing by. It's not about escaping a doomed earth, but being a part of its rebirth. We've all heard about heaven and hell and how if you don't accept Christ, you'll end up in an eternal cell. But you might say, what about those who've never heard? Because God condemning such people just sounds absurd. Well, I want to let you see the bigger picture of Christianity. It's bigger than dividing lines, nations, race, gender, and doctrinal ties. There's a bigger story in the Bible than John 3.16. And if you've read the whole thing, you know what I mean. It's not about eternal condemnation, but grace, love, and cosmic reconciliation. Don't get me wrong, I believe in hell, but our focus shouldn't be on condemning each other by saying farewell. Because you're not just saved from something, you're saved to walk into new life where your old self dies and your new one comes alive. I felt a fire in my soul I knew was not my own. Had no idea where to go, but knew I wasn't alone. But it's not about feelings. It's about looking at the cross and kneeling. That's usually where the gospel ends, though. So let me explain further by using different lingo. We like to talk about the cross, resurrection, and virgin birth. But we often neglect all the words Christ said while still here on earth. Jesus didn't just talk about the afterlife. He spoke much more about the abundant life. See, heaven is the freeway, the journey, not just the destination. It looks like action, justice, and reconciliation. Heaven is love, joy, peace, kindness, and grace. It's much better than harps, clouds, and outer space. It's his kingdom, his angels, his power, his glory. It's not about us. Let's not forget the whole story. It's the sand in the desert, the water in the ocean, the air in your lungs. It's your body in motion. So be a part of the church, Christ's global body, and be yourself not another carbon copy. Because it's not just about the righteous wrath of God being satisfied, but about you waking up to your calling and making the world more purified. But that takes transformation of the soul, a spiritual effect that makes you better when you're old. See, there's an ache in your soul that cries out for more. Your identity isn't found in Instagram likes, so stop keeping score. God's oh, purpose God. for you goes beyond the American dream. I used to work in one of these buildings. It's not as good as it seems. You're not just a sinner saved by grace, but a beloved son or daughter eternally embraced. You're already just as loved now as you ever will be. Christ paid it all, and now you are free. Free to live both for the now and not yet. The kingdom to come and its present silhouette. See, hope must be our anthem because one day we will witness Christ coming down to bring the kingdom in its fullness. Until then, we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. So let's run the race and get caught up in a bigger story. Because this world is broken but beautiful, and God uses us to help restore before our funerals. So let's not sit around and wait for the pearly gates. Let's do something now before it's too late. No matter what you've done, you're forgiven, and your story is still being written. Heaven could be happening all around on this street, in this town. Heaven's screaming like a bus, but can you hear the sound? Because destiny is calling. Though this world is falling apart, God's looking at you and asking, will you play your part? My God. My God, my God, my God, my God. Listen here, Lindas. 
listen here, Linda's. That right there is important. We always looking at heaven being the ultimatum thing to go to, but we really are heaven on earth. But are we living to the fullest of our potential is the question. Are we living our dreams? Are we doing what we're supposed to do? Or are we just frustrated with life and getting stressed out? God wants us to live our life to the fullest. That's 100% for sure. You know, and this right here is just so in line with what um, I believe that's going to happen tonight. Um, so on tonight, um, I want to introduce a person that I met about a month ago and has impacted um, me quite a bit. We're a little low in numbers like last week. I don't know. Normally we have a whole lot more, anywhere between 30 to 40. But I believe with school starting back and everything and people finally getting back to work and things like that. But I wanted you all to personally get on here to make sure that you guys get to experience this man of God. And he has been a tremendous impact to me and Cheyenne. And I'm going to allow him to introduce himself of what he does. And then I want him to just flow wherever God is going to take him. And I'm going to introduce and I'm going to make you a host, um, Coach. And so the person that I'm introducing tonight is my coach of the financial and the insurance side, which is none other than Coach Brown, the multi-million dollar man himself. <laughs> and he's such a great host. So I'm going to refer it to him. And I want you guys to unmute yourself. Y'all know how we do this. Come on, come on, come on. Let's show Coach some love and let him know that we appreciate him taking out of his busy schedule, just getting off one room. All right, all right, I appreciate it. So, coach, I'm going to put you in view and I'm going to make you the person in charge tonight. Go for all it. All right, all right, good. And uh, you, you know how my, my internet works, I got the most expensive one, right? So if it starts to fade, I'll change my network. Just let me know, all right? Yes, sir. Uh, all right, all right, good, good. All right, so it, it, indeed a pleasure uh, to be in the midst of you uh, as Mama D, right? I think you all refer to her as Mama D as well. Uh, it, is, it has been a blessing for us to honestly uh, meet. And uh, of course we got a chance to meet by the, by the great uh, daughter, Miss Sh Cheyenne. And uh, being in the financial services industry, you know, uh, Cheyenne and I got a chance to talk and I said, uh, man, I need to meet the person in your life uh, that's of influence and that you run all your decisions by. And who was the very next call? Uh, the great Mama D. <laughs> and so uh, it's been about a month uh, uh, that we've been in this re relationship, in this business partnership. Uh, in the financial in, in, uh, in the financial services industry, but it's feel like it's feel like it's been forever. I'm telling you, because if you y'all know Mama D, uh, the, the chemistry, the warmth of her, her heart, and what she brings as a person, uh, it just says a lot, man. So, and then it says a lot about over you know over 20 years of experience in the financial services industry. Uh, it says a lot uh, for her to trust me enough. Uh, to, to speak to you tonight about what, what I truly believe is very, very, very important. You know, as we look at it, there's so, so many things that happens and transact in the financial services industry. You know, as I talked about this over 20 years of experience, you know, uh, my, of course, I'm, I'm a little bit about me. I'm originally uh, from South Carolina, uh, a small town, Lake City, down in that Myrtle Beach area, if you ever visited South Carolina and uh, migrated out, uh, spent some time in the actual military and uh, did not uh, did not actually retire, but uh, being married, still married over 27 years, uh, we decided to transition out, move back to Columbia, South Carolina. And uh, there was where I got my career and start, you know, uh, uh, as far as college, corporate America. And then I was sitting there in corporate America and uh, truly they was not paying me what I thought I deserved. The financial services industry walked in, uh, this great company. I took a look at it, wasn't sure. And uh, to think now that it's been a combined experience of right at 20 years, uh, it's just amazing. You know, I've gotten a chance to, to touch people's lives 
but I've gotten a chance to really share the financial concepts that really help folks and made an actual impressionable impact, man, across the state of South Carolina and neighboring states. And it's just because when we think about the financial services industry, when I think about my experience, uh, you know, uh, it, it wasn't uh, early on, it wasn't taught. Money was not taught. Uh, you know, and, and that, I think that for a lot of us is the reason why we stumble through it is because it's not taught. So tonight, what I'm going to spend some time is talking about, uh, well, I'm gonna, we're going to start with the financial house, but then we're going to go into an, the, the concept of, uh, of insurance and uh, specifically life insurance and then how that works. You know, very important as, as we talk about that concept. You know, uh, when you when I just think about it, Mama, I just think about, uh, you know, when we think about money itself and how important it could be as far as options we know we understand it's not it's not the it's not actually you know given that the as long as it's not the love of it you follow me it's really when we understand it, it's the precious commodity to provide those particular options but how important is it and how necessary you know i just thought about it man uh, somebody in that in that chat room tell me if you if you know this how many times is money mentioned in the in the bible Say, how many times is that mentioned in the Bible? If you're out there in that chat room, just I mean, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you the, the three, the three, the three actual answers, and you choose the right one. Is it over a hundred times? You know, is it over two hundred times, or is it over two thousand times? See, that side of it is me. It means that there's an important message behind it, and and we understand that if it's mentioned that many times royal riches inheritance the the the, the way they the defined it in the, in the actual bible if we understand that and we're reading the actual word then we know it's important for us to understand it overall because most people never really understand never master money that they go through their lives with money mastering them and what i truly mean is this most people wake up every morning and they are off to work they're off to for money however very few people get a chance to have money work for them and so that side of it's just important that that intrigued me overall was the better understanding the better positioning and then i, I have a presentation that you say i got the hosting side so y'all let me know once this presentation is is uh is actually on the screen here hey coach you are sputtering a little bit in and out on and off not consistently but okay. on and off. yeah I am. All right. All right. Great. So what I'm going to try to change networks and y'all just let me know whether or not. All right. We can see you. We could see it where you, you can see me, but I, I can see you now, but yeah, now I'm going to change that work. Yeah. Just give me. I can, okay. All right. Great. It's unstable. Hope. All right, let me know when I'm back. Yep, let me know when I'm back. You're sitting All right, still. let me know when I'm back. You're sitting still, try it again. All right, I'm back, am I back? Um, <laughs> I mean, your face is still, so I don't know. Okay, face is still. Not head. good, okay. All right, head is moving, all right, good. And so, okay, good. And so we changed it, uh, we changed it to our, to my, to my second network, so, if for some reason we sput again, just let me know. All right. All right, great. And then uh, let me know when this when the screen actually comes up here. Oh, did we get anyone in the chat that 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 100, 200, or 2,000? I put 200. Nobody put 200. really knows. Gotcha. Over 2,000 times. There's 500 mm -hmm. verses that touch money in the Bible. Wow. It's amazing. Totally amazing. Um, all right, so hopefully you can see my screen. Yes, sir. All right, awesome. All right, so as we as we as we're talking about this particular presentation, uh, you know, custom customized, but I've been able to share this presentation, man, throughout South Carolina, uh, to over over thirty states now, and counting uh, through a contract with the United States military 
just really fight the, the financial empowerment, the literacy side of it, guys, just really wanting people to better understand uh, the financial concepts, but how it applies to money. And so when we look at it, uh, this is catered to building a strong financial house. You know, if there's if there's anyone out there that and, and I'm going to be talking to you so you can talk back to me, uh, formal presentation, but informal, because I want to make sure that we get this tonight and uh, we have some participation because it is actually Zoom. Uh, it is the, the actual Zoom hours, but it's your Zoom hours. So I want to make sure that we truly get in this and I will open it up at the end. But uh, when we look at this in building this strong financial house. You know, uh, it's a couple of things that's got to happen. The foundation of that, the foundation, the very bottom of this house, if, you, if, you, if you're able to, to see that screen, it is protect your income. That when, as you're raising kids and, and as in a marriage and you're building an actual house and debt and things of that nature, it is to make sure that the foundation of it, because we know with homes, for all of us out there that are home owners, home renters, we know that if the foundation is not put together well, then the whole entire house could shift, it could crumble. Mm -hmm. And so that side of it is very important that we put the protection in place, but not only that, mm -hmm. the budget mm -hmm. and, the, and the actual will side of it, making sure that that happens. Let me see if I get that person there. Oh, okay, that's Cheyenne out there talking. We muted her. <laughs> All right, gotcha. He's trying to do my presentation. All right, good. And so, and so when we look at this, uh, the budget, making sure that the budget and emergency fund and will, and I, I've been talking to Mama D and she's been saying that, that, that y'all have been working, that this, that this great group have been working at building this financial house already. That a lot of the stuff you've addressed on this particular screen, making sure the debt side of it is very important is what we really point out. And then the retirement, there's so many people right now, when you think about it, there's so many people that want to retire, but they, they're missing the retirement date or would never retire with dignity. And we address those particular problems. Uh, also, we, we touch and, 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 and on, honestly provide instructions about the college fund si side of it, that there's so many kids out there that are headed to college, although it's virtually now, but uh, making sure that the savings pieces in place and then all of those other actual goals and dreams when you think about yourself and you think about uh you think about you and then the goals and dreams that you have planned what are those goals and dreams of buying a uh, an actual dream home buying the actual dream boat the car you know those types of things all of those are are part of that financial house but as we look at that how do we make it strong so that these things stay in place once you once you put them in place, but then you finish overall with what we call financial independence. See, what I know is this, is that uh, as we talk uh, families through this, right, that first thing is we address the problem is, 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 is that with this thing called money. You know, I talked about it, is that it's mentioned, you know, money is mentioned over, over I said 2,000 times in the Bible, over 500 verses on money, and we still, this is where we're missing it because if we look at the thing, this thing called money, it's one that comes with no instructions. So, so just think about it for a second. When you think about money, think about who taught, who taught you money, who taught me money, what was the teachings about money? And so if, you can, if, you, if, you, if you're in the house that I grew up in, it, it was like money was the, the, the saying was money is the root of all evil. And it's like, man, stay away from it. And people with money, they fight over it. People without money, they fight. And so money causes fight. It was like some, I was just, man, confused. And when I looked at this, really, when we look at money, it is the one thing that comes with no instructions. And so what do I simply mean by that? If you think about everybody, if you think about everything else in life, there's some kind of manual. There's something to walk you through a couple of, you know, the steps to it to, to clarify it. But money is one that we simply do not, for most of our lives, we don't understand it. It comes in the front door and for some reason goes out of the back door. Mm -hmm. Simply this, you know, if you think about when was the first time you've earned an actual paycheck, think about the first time, the first time that you earned a paycheck. I'm just going to I, I'm, we're going to have some participation. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, Brittany, is that Brittany Pugh? Brittany, the first time you earned a paycheck was how long ago, Brittany? How long ago was that? Think about that. The very first time you, you, earned, a, you earned a paycheck. How many, how many years ago was that, Brittany? Brittany? 
She said 2016, coach. 2016. All right, Brittany. Good. You just started working in the workforce. All right. So, Brittany, good. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to let's go to Amanda real quick. How long? How long, Amanda? How many how many years? This your first very very first paycheck. Kelsey said hers was um in 2004. 2004. Can anybody out there beat 2004? We got oh. anyone out there that can that got a paycheck, received a paycheck, their very first check paycheck before 2004. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know Mama D could go. I know she could do it. But if you if you just think about that, we don't have anybody that could beat 2004. Yeah. All right. City said she can. <laughs> City, how, tell me, City, how long? How long? The very first paycheck. 1995, she said. There we go, City. Now, all right, not to take anything away from the rest of the participants since 1995. Now, think about the very first paycheck coming in, City, and, and then think about the last one that you just received. And then in between the first one you ever received in 95 to the last one, add all those paychecks up. And then when you think about those particular paychecks, adding all of them up, that's probably how many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, City. Do we, we even have, and you think about it, how many millions, how many hundreds of thousands? For most folks out there, it's somewhere between, I don't know, 900,000 to two, three million is what they've made so far. But the thing is, the money came in the front door. But when you ask, if you ask an individual, how much can they put their hands on right now? Mm -hmm. So you brought millions through the front door. How much can you actually put your hands on right now? The, the actual answer there, the answer is not much. Right. And so that just tells us that it all, the money comes into the front door and then it meets Cousin Bill. And then based on Cousin Bill means he's on the 1st and the 15th in between every week. And then when Cousin Bill finishes with that money, then what happens is it goes, the rest of it goes out the back door and we start all over. And so that's that's been a cycle of life. And that's why it's so important to, for us to understand the instructions on money, but specifically making sure that we protect it. And so when we talk about the protection side of it, guys, it's, it's more of really knowing that there's three things. There's three things that helps in this particular area. And, and so when we look at the financial side of just people in general life, Right. This is these are the three things that most people do not that they do not actually have. And, 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 and this was Kevin over 15 years ago. And that's why I got involved in the financial services industry is because the first thing that most people don't have, Mama D, is, a, is an actual financial education, right. not an actual university education. You, I'm, we're talking about the the uh, the honest teachings of how to make sure that money does right by people. And so, and then perfecting the financial concepts of money to make sure that in the end, your family is taken care of and the folks around you. So having a financial education is the first one. The second one is, is having a financial game plan. See, that side of it is when we look at it, it's not only just the education of understanding it, but it's now is what is the game plan? You know, often here, if we think about it, this is what I'm talking about, guys, is that most people take more time planning a, a vacation, right, <laughs> entertainment, than they do planning their financial lives. Families sit around the table and say, well, all right, this is where our where's our next vacation, kids? All right, where would you like to go? All right, we went last year. All right, we're planning this. Now let's start saving because we're going to be going on this vacation in a year. This that's the way that the way the world was before the pandemic, and it's probably going to go back. But they don't huddle around the table and say, "All right, let's put together the financial game plan to make sure that when we show up ten years from now, fifteen years, twenty years from now, that it's all in sync." And so that's the thing that we talk about. And then the last one is having a financial coach. So when we think about it, uh, Eva, when we think about a financial coach. Think about everything else we do in life. I think that's Frida. Everything else we do in life, we have a coach. Right. See, the reason why I'm on this particular call is because there's a spiritual coach on this particular call. And Mama D invited me because given that there's a spiritual coach, it is to put us more intact in understanding life, ourselves, and our salvation, which we need. 
not only that, if there's a, if there's a medical problem, for most people, Qua, if there's a medical issue, where do we go through? Where do we go to? Who's our coach? Doctor so and so. Right. Right. And then when there's when there's those problems that we just can't deal, with, it's just like out of our control. We drop down on our knees and we seek the coach of all coaches to help us through. Well. <laughs> and see that side of it is important but when it comes to the financial side of it what we found is what i found what we've seen is we try to fix ourselves so many people try to fix themselves in that area of money and what happens is is it's best to have somebody with expertise to lead you through it and that's why we found so many people are broke because that area is one where you can't actually fix the problem until you become an expert at the problem. And so that's why we're talking about seeking that particular, helping, that, seeking that particular financial education, seeking that actual game plan, and then making sure that all, it, all of it's in perspective. So what are we talking about here as we, if, as we look at this? Is that most people don't plan to fail at life. Think about it. They just fail to actually plan. And so tonight is about, I'm so excited for this particular call because you all are planning, you're planners. And I love being in the midst of planners, folks that, that are taking their lives and understanding and what they wanna make sure is that they're doing the right things, so whether it be spiritually, uh, mentally, physically, financially. And I love being a part of that. That's why I said, when, when Mama D said, could you speak on the call? I got excited because I love the ear, having the ear of, of individuals, man, that truly one are Christians. And then secondly, truly want to do the right things in life by, by all means. And so that side of it is what we teach folks as a part of this financial plan is this is how you this is how you not fail is to understand it is to have that GPS. So specifically to the insurance piece, because I really want to spend some time there, because when you think about when you think about your family right now, I don't know if there's any, you know, reactionary to put your thumbs up if you got kids out there, if you got kids or or or, or, or there you go. Thumbs up if you got kids. So to, to, to think about our kids, to think about our spouses, if something were to happen. You know, 70% of households, when they look at it, they said, listen, I would be financially impacted if the primary wage earner, if the primary, whoever's bringing the most money, if they were to, if something were to happen to them, I would be financially impacted. And that's for most people. If you've got two wage earners in there and the primary wage earner, something happens to that wage earner, people are devastated. So how do we protect that? See, when we look at insurance, insurance has been one of those words where so many have misused it, when it's specific life insurance. You know, a lot, a lot have misused it because when we look at it, we go, a lot of folks go, well, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that one. I don't know if I want to actually leave anything behind. If something happened and i know it's not this particular group but I'm, I'm i've met some groups out there that said i don't know if i want to leave anything behind if something happens to me so now i don't think about the insurance I, i've heard people say well you know what i'm gonna let my job my job insurance take care of the family and and that's fine while you're on the job but see are we going to be on the job forever or is it for a period of actual time and so what we know is, is that it's, it's, it's a period of time, which means that the job insurance is one that you can't bank on after the age of 60. And so you got to have measures in place and mechanism in place. And that's why we talk about this is the devastation piece. You know, not only this, when I look at it, nearly when you look at nearly half, 48 percent of U.S. households have do not have life insurance at all. Now that's a huge, think about that, 50%. That means one out of every two houses on your block in your neighborhood, right? Does not have insurance. Which means if something were to happen, then now we're gonna have to go with, uh, here we go. We're gonna have the, the GoFundMe, which, which given GoFundMe, they published so many times that we're not an insurance policy. Please don't bank on us. But we continue, there's so many people continue to lean on GoFundMe because 
48, 48%, 50% of households. Think about your families and think about if it's one out of every two that doesn't have insurance, then when we sit at the Thanksgiving table, how many of these folks that don't have insurance at the Thanksgiving table, which means if something hit our family, man, it will be distraught. There will be, we will be in trouble backed up against the wall because now we got to pass the couple of election plate and things of that nature. So the insurance piece is very, very important. So we try to teach this, you know, the, the, the humor to this is, if we look at this is Vanessa, you know, if you had a toaster, you know, think about this toaster. If you had a toaster in the house and given the toaster that it wasn't actually toast coming out, it was money. And every first and the 15th, there was $2,000 that was coming out of that toaster. $2,000 popping out of that toaster on the first, $2,000 on the 15th. So the questions would be, would you like that toaster for one? Anybody would like that toaster? We got anybody. Thumbs up if you like that toaster. But that toaster was, yes. was, there we go. We got a couple of folks. Good. Now, the second one is you would like the toaster, but the second one is would you honestly insure it? See, we like the toaster, but would you insure it? And then if we look at this, unfortunately, we know that that we don't have a toaster as a, as a money machine. But what we talk to folks about is really insuring the money that you bring into your households. Now, we know that it should be, the insurance should take place, but now it is what type of insurance? How should that, how should I buy insurance? And why should I buy it? And so when we look at this example, this is how, this is how detrimental it is. When we look at a, a, a happy family and, and then the mom is happily in her career bringing in $3,500 a month, uh, you know, giving the actual husband, uh, bringing in thirty five hundred a month, raising kids. You got they got mortgage, car payment, insurance. Over seven thousand dollars is coming to, into the household, but then the monthly bills are at seven thousand as well. And so the problem here is that a lost, a lost of a lost of one of those particular income to lose a person means that $3,500 of bills doesn't go away. Some people think if he leaves, the bill leaves too. No, if she leaves the bill, no, they're still in place. So now we're left with $3,500 of income to protect the $7,000 of actual bills. Man, what do you think? Tell me, what do y'all think that situation is going to bring? Man, foreclosure. <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. What that brings is good. More altar call. Right. You got me. <laughs> That's what it brings. Right. You know, we, we have a saying is that uh, our pastor is that with people coming down the aisles, you got to understand that, that a lot of them are praying about the financial burden mm -hmm. that they're trying to get through. And and that financial burden sometimes could be prevented if they just took the, the necessary measures of placing the right things in place. And that is making sure that we understand the importance of insurance is not for burial. Insurance is for protecting, truly protecting the income. So if something happens, if something happens to, to, to her who takes care of everything, you got me? If something happens to him, then I really need his or her income to continue to come through the household and to the household for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I don't need that to stop. And so the only way to do that, the only two ways is to save enough money right. or to purchase the insurance. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this, right, the only, the only two ways to do this, the first type. So when we look at this, the, it, it is to make sure that we got the proper insurance policy. And then given our particular screen, right, um, we do have the flexibility to mute and unmute. Can we, we can mute and unmute? Yep. Let's go. All right, good. I just want to make sure. Yep. And, uh, I'm going, I'm going to use a, if I would have some, I don't know, if we got some stuff going on in the background or not, but I want to use a couple of folks so, so they can help me out here. Right. Kenya is good. She ain't got nobody. Um, All right. Kenya, <laughs> give, me, give me somebody else. Give me Kenya. Kenya. All, right. All right, Kenya, you can, you can, you can participate. And Vanessa, Kel, Vanessa. Kel, All right. Kel should be good too. All right, Kenya and Vanessa. All right, we can participate in this presentation. All right, I'm good. I'm going to call y'all out while y'all playing. All right, that's what I'm talking. <laughs> this is good. And so when we look at this, uh, I'm sorry, Kenya and 
who was the other Kenya and um, Kelsey Kelsey's good Kelsey. all right Kenya how are you doing this evening how are you doing this evening she's in North Carolina coach all right good and then and so, so Kenya would you be able to participate off of mute with, with me would you be able to participate she's off of mute? On. she's on She's off of mute? Okay, gotcha. All right, because I'm looking. Okay, gotcha. And then the other is Kelsey. All right, good. And so Kenya and Kelsey, I just need y'all to, 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 to talk me through this. I need y'all to, to role play with me because given these two, two scenarios, I want to see which one is the best one for you, right? And so now, so when we look at this, Kenya, right, uh, you're about to buy a, an insurance policy, but you still are not sure which type. So because you're not sure, 85% of people go with choice one. They go at the left side of this particular screen, Kelsey, the left side. So when we look at this, let's just say Kenya and Kelsey for, a, for role plan, y'all had this particular policy. You had an actual $75,000 policy, if you can see that, and that policy, right, you're paying at the bottom, if you can see that green, you're paying $50 a month, right? And so given the $50 a month, the way this works is there's three components to the cash value life insurance. If you look at the top, it's actually, it's supposed to provide protection, right? Number two is accumulation of value. And then number three is retirement income. So people buy this because those three things are the features that they want to be able to activate at some point in their career or life, right? And so great. But then the, 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 the name of this particular policy, the, they, they make up a lot of different names. It's called whole life insurance, universal life, flexible premium life, right? Uh, 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 paid up life, educational life. Man, uh, look at that flexible premium adjustable life. Think about that. Who would buy that? Who would truly buy that based on the name? See, if we look at that alone, Mama D, then the, look at it. It says flexible premium. So what is flexible? What is flexible, Kenya? What is flexible? Basically, you're going to be paying more. Mm -hmm. You're going to be paying more on your what? What comes after flexible? What did it say? The word what? Premium. Premium. Right. And then it says it's also adjustable life. So what's adjustable? Your what? Your life. It's going to, um, it's basically you're going to be adjusting. Wow. Can you imagine people, 85% of people are buying this and they know when they buy it, it says what's going to flex is your premium and what's going to adjust at some point is your life insurance. And they're like, whoa, that would be like a mortgage. Who will buy a flexible, you got me, adjustable mortgage? Mm -hmm. Means the payment you start with today will not be the same payment uh, down the road and we can change it at any time. Most people wouldn't buy that. Would you agree? You're right. Exactly. Exactly. So when you look at the scenario, Kelsey, right, spending $50 a month, every time y'all spend $50, $50 a month, then $25 of that goes into the green area. And then the other 25 pays for the insurance, which is a $75,000 policy. So the money you're putting in the green area, Kelsey, that money gets there because who puts it there, Kelsey? We do. Exactly. You are placing that money there. It's your money. Now, Let's take this to the, the, the age of 25, right? Let's say, let's say at the age of, of, of 26, a year later after buying this policy, right? One of you pass away. Do you think Kenya or Kelsey, right? They will, they will pay the entire 75,000 one year later. Mm -mm. Right? No. You would think not, am I right? Exactly. But the actual law states that they have to so the only three reasons why you uh, an insurance policy period would not pay out is if they find out that you missed right stated your health within the first two years or commit suicide within the first two years or you don't make your monthly premium is that is that fair kelsey kenya yep those are the three things those are the three things. There we go. So other than those, they have to. You can have a policy one day and make one payment. God forbid something happened. As long as you don't mistake your health or you don't commit suicide, you made your premium, they're going to have to pay because it's the, it's the actual law of the industry. All right? Now, so let's go to the age 45, though. At the age of 45, you got $13,000 in your account. Feeling good? You got $75,000 of insurance. You actually call the company up because now... Kids are going to college and they need a car. So you call them and say, I got $13,000. I'd like $10,000 of my money. 
And then guess what they do because it's yours? They cut you a check. Now, when they cut you a check, Kenya, you buy the car. God forbid, though, after you buy the car, you spent the 10000 something happens to you, Kenya. Do you think that Kelsey receives the 75000 No. How much, how much of the 75000 do you think Kelsey will receive? If I did, took away $10,000, she's only basically getting 3000 back. Mm, oh, that was good. You're, you're exactly right, right? It's not the three, but if you take the 10 from the 75,000, mm -hmm. then she's gonna, you're gonna get the 65,000. Do you follow mm -hmm. me? Yes. All right, good. So what happened is you put the money in the green area, but when you wanted to take the money out, it was honestly considering it was considered a loan and a loan means that kenya kelsey you gotta someday do what you gotta pay that back plus what interest plus interest exactly right so what we found is we teach that that's pretty much strike one is that if i put the money there it's my money but if i ever want it i gotta borrow borrow it means a loan loan means i gotta pay it back plus interest which means it was never my money so is that working for the consumer or against the consumer? Against. Totally yeah. against. Listen, against. not only that, let's look at the age 65. What do most people do at the age of 65? Retire. Retire. So now Kenya Kelsey, you're at the retirement age, you're 65 years of age. You look up and you got 37,000 sitting in your account in your cash value and you got $75,000 of insurance over a hundred thousand. So you call the company up and say, you know what? We are vacationing. We're retiring. Send me the entire 37,000. And because it's yours, they cut you a check for the entire 37,000, right? You, you listen, y'all go enjoy life, spend listen, 90 days on a vacation. You return back. God forbid something happens to one of you. Right after you return, how much do you think they pay you out of the seventy-five thousand? Um, whatever's left. I'm whatever's left. That was good. You exactly right. They should pay you whatever's left. But at this particular point, because you took all of the money that was yours out of the green area, they pay you zero. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? <laughs> why, why do they pay you zero? Good. And the reason for it is this, because the policy states, this particular policy, cash value policy states that in what happens is if you ever take all of the cash value that 30 to 31 days later, the policy laps. Yep. Why? Yeah. Because the thirty-seven thousand, right, has to be paid back because it's a what loan. Mm -hmm. But when I when I take all of the money out, I just put the policy within a thirty to thirty-one day lapse period. You ever heard someone around you say, "I cashed in a life insurance policy"? Yeah. yeah. And what they're saying is, I took my cash value, and because I took my cash value, they cancel my life insurance. Mm -hmm. Not which is that working for the consumer or against the consumer? Fully against. It's really Fully against. And so, if you knew, if you knew this firsthand, would you would you participate in buying a policy like this? No. Exactly. So the educational piece is very important to um, to understand. It's not just to buy insurance, but it's really the, what type of insurance and what's going to work best for my family. Because let's look at let's look at step three. Let's look at a uh, strike three, I should say. Now what's happening is you live to the age of a hundred, right? Working out, eating good, right? Uh, doing the right things. Now at the age of a hundred, look how much money's in that green area, Kenya and Kelsey. Seventy five thousand in your cash value. You still got 75,000 of insurance, right? Never touch the 75,000. So if something happens to you, Kenya, right? They, the company is going to pay your beneficiary, Kelsey, 75,000. But who gets the 75,000 in your savings? It goes back to the insurance company. 
goes back to the insurance company. So you've been saving, what is that, 75 years? Mm -hmm. And 75 years later, your savings goes back to the company. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Robbed. Robbed. Yeah. And so that, I didn't say it, I didn't say it, but it's close to it. You're exactly right. That's the way, if I don't, if we're, if they're not explaining this and walking you through it, it's like, I feel robbed, right? I feel done wrong. And so this is why we explain it because these are the three, three strike rules. The first one is if I ever want to borrow money out of cash value, I got to pay it back plus interest because it's borrowing, it's a loan. And then if I ever take all of my money, the policy lapse 30, 31 days later because they only want me for the period of time that I'm saving money. And then if I'm smart enough to never borrow, then what happens in the end is the insurance pays off, but the savings goes back to the company. And so we just believe, we believe as we're educating the consumer that if you give you all the rules to the game, then you can really play the game. And what do we mean? Taking the $50 and now buying a term life insurance plan, not a cash value, buying a term life insurance plan, the same scenario, Kenya and Kelsey, would have cost $23. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't that a lot cheaper? Yes. Exactly. In this scenario, $23, which means immediately you start to save 27 what? Dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with the $23, if you look at the right side, this is choice two, down at the bottom. Now you've got the $75,000 of protection. Something happened. Kenya's okay. Kelsey's okay. Awesome. But then now we get a chance because you were spending $50 or about to spend $50, we can take the difference of the $27 and we can now invest the difference. Mm -hmm. And if we invest the difference, look at this at the top right corner. After, if you look at this 40 years of saving of $27, do you see that top right number? That's over $156,000. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. think about it now i got 156 dollars in my account it's not money that i have to borrow it's in my account which means i get a chance to withdraw the money never borrow the money withdrawal means i never have to pay it back borrowing it we already know we have to pay it back so now that you got 156 thousand, and if something happened i got an insurance policy for 75 thousand. so in in which situation if we look at this kenya if we look at this, Kelsey, which is the better situation? Is it having both the 156 and the 75,000 or choice one, combining the two? Choice two. Choice two. Choice two. And so when given that, that normally it takes about seven minutes to really walk individuals through, clients through, right? Consumers through these two scenarios. And after seven minutes, every client says choice two. See, choice two is an empowerment. You're empowered to now control your investment separately from your insurance. It has nothing to do. They're, they're actually beside each other rather than inside because they don't affect each other. So if I ever want to now withdraw money from the 156, it doesn't affect the 75. If I withdraw all of the money from my investment, it doesn't affect the actual 75. If someone passes away with the 75, they get also the 156. So both accounts are under your control versus the in a cash value, whole life, flexible premium, adjustable life. What happens is the insurance is affected by the savings and the savings is affected by the insurance. And so when you look at this, our true scenario is, and I'm winding down, guys, a true scenario out there in the market is like this. This is what it looks like out there, is that families that go out to buy insurance, if they don't know, this is what it looks like. When they're participating with that choice one, right, they're, 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 most families are insuring for about $150,000 average, John and Mary, but they're spending about $295 a month for that. And the cash value is supposed to accumulate like 124000 Where? If we look at choice two, that same $295, right? What, could, what truly could happen is 400000 on John, 400000 on Mary, and then the monthly premium, if you look at that, Kelsey, 
And if you look at that, Kenya, the monthly premium goes from 295 to what? 126. 126. A huge difference. Am I right? Mm -hmm. But look at the coverage. The coverage is almost three times the amount on both sides. So, so the question would be now, given that there's two kids involved in, in this in the scenario, right? In both scenarios, because there's no 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 insurance on the kids on the left side, but there's ten thousand dollars insurance on each one of the kids on the on the on the right side. If the if the kids lose both parents, which plan would be the best plan? Eight hundred thousand or three hundred thousand? Eight hundred thousand. Exactly. And so that side of it is what we know is this and, and the overall savings is almost 500,000 but when we look at the investment piece when we look at how that money grew that $27 how it grew we teach families the, the, what we call the rule of 72 which simply just calculates you taking advantage of interest versus interest taking advantage of you and what I mean Kenya and Kelsey since you're still, you're still helping me with this is that Right now, do you know what kind of interest banks pay on local on their local checking and savings accounts? No. Right. It's less than 1% interest. So the rule is, is that if it's if whatever interest rate they give you, take 72 and divide it by the interest rate, and it tells you how fast your money double. So 72 divided by Three means the money would double every 24 years. So if money is going to double every 24 years for you to retire, to get the dream home, a kid's college fund, is that fast or slow? 24 years, every 24 years. Is it slow? It's really slow. And what's, what's happening here is the interest. So to speed that up, then you got to get a better interest rate. So if you get 12% interest, which we help families find, right? Nine to twelve percent interest. Then seventy-two divided by twelve means the money doubles every extra six years. And so, what happens to these two accounts? Look at these two accounts. And, and Kenyon Kelson, not sure if you have if you have kids, right? But if your kid had a three percent account or a twelve percent account, look at the age of your kid when they're born till forty-eight years of age. This kid over here has forty thousand at the age of forty-eight. And this kid that has started at 12%, at the age of 48, he's got 2.5 million. Which account would you want your kid to have? 12%. The 12%. Oh, exactly. But but what's happened is no one is teaching the 9 to 12%. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening is most people, when they save money, they're saving it at the local bank. And when you save at the local bank, they're going to give you less than 1% interest but then they're going to place the money at 12% interest and then they're going to make the most money off of your money. Right. How do you know? If Kenya and Kelsey, if you were to walk into the bank tomorrow and put $10,000 in the bank, they would pay you less than 1%. Right. But if you were to walk in the bank tomorrow to borrow $10,000, how much would you have to pay them in interest? 12%. Mm -hmm. So they're simply saying their money is better than your money or simply learning the rules to money. So when it boils down to it on the insurance piece, it's by term and invested difference. Simply this, the theory of decreasing responsibility teaches us this, is that early on in life for everyone that's on this Zoom call, when you look at it, children are young, high debt, house mortgage, a loss of income would be devastating. So if something would have happened on that left-hand side, families are set back for generations because it's hard to overcome debt after debt after debt. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're finding that so many generations are starting over because of this. So what we have to prepare for is making sure that when you're at retirement age, kids are grown, lower debt, mortgage is paid, retirement income is needed. And, in, and, and not, not only that, but we have to prepare for dying too soon, man. I often say that, you know, if you die premature and somebody goes, what do you mean premature? When he calls you in, he calls you in. It's like if you don't get insurance first, right? And so that side of it is very important is dying too soon before you put the proper things in place. And then the last thing is living too long. And that's the retirement side. But all of that equates in the middle is making sure you got a plan. And that plan is, 
it starts with income protection. You know, at this point, I'm, I'm gonna stop video because I've been going for quite some time. And then I, I'm gonna take a couple of questions at this time. And uh, hopefully there's some questions out there or they're probably, they're probably tired, of, tired of listening to that presentation that I had going, right? Either or, right. But any, any questions about that? Because we really want you to understand why, why insurance is so important. It protects the money that's coming in. And if you do it right, it's going to protect it forever, mm -hmm. which now is tied to the options that you can provide your families. So it is, we talk about renting a legacy. See, everyone wants to pass on a legacy. You know, for, for most of us, passing on our last name is the pride. But then after the pride, the legacy side of it is what are we passing on past that? You know, I often have a joke here is, uh, is uh, do you, anyone on here know their great, great, great grandfather? Three generations. Nobody knows the great, great, we normally have one. And I've asked this for over 15, 16 years. I don't know my great, great, great grandfather. And one of the reasons why is because he didn't leave me nothing. See, when they leave something behind, we remember them forever. And so the legacy side of it is we have to make sure we got the proper plan. And so I wanted to come before y'all tonight really talking about this, the, the money side of it, the option side, but really specifically talking about the insurance. And uh, I'm sorry, I did open it up for questions and I kept talking. Coach, we do have a couple of questions. All Kels, right, good. Kels is asking, why is it so hard for people who have pre-existing pre conditions to get insurance? Good. So I'm going to compare it to health is like um, your driver's record. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, and the given that analogy side of it, right, just, just painting an example, is that if, if driving record has has a, it, it, it it exposes risk if it talks about risk that you are uh, a driver that's i hate to use the word but reckless mm -hmm. then there is srr is a srr insurance S sr 22 yeah sorry there we go sr 22 right that's for the folks that could barely get insurance to no insurance and so given the health side it's the weighted risk. And so given it's the weighted risk side of it, they're looking at, here we go, mortality table, how long are you gonna be here? And will those health conditions actually take you out of here sooner? And I hate to say it that way, but I'm just being totally transparent. And so uh, uh, all insurance companies wait, they wait the risk side of it because insurance is simply this, when you look at insurance, it is you giving your monthly premium to the insurance company every month. And when you give them your money, this is what you're saying. I'm going to pass away this month. Please take my payment. And then the insurance company says, you're not. Give me that payment. And so when you look at it that way, with health indicators, when you're about to give them the premium, they go, you may honestly it looks like you may pass away, so we don't want your premium. And I know that sounds harsh, but it's the weighted risk. And so because it's weighted risk, it's hard for the pre-existing. Now, there are companies out there that do the actual pre-existing, but what you have to make sure of is that the actual monthly premium makes sense. Because there are policies out there when you, you have pre-existing, they give you what's called a graded period. And the graded period can be from two years to five years, which means if you pass away within the two to five years, they only return your premiums. If you live past the two to five years, they, may, they will honor the death claim, which is only 15, a lot of times it's about $10,000, but you're paying an astronomical price, it's almost, two to three hundred dollars a month sometimes for those type policies so you have to look at it and go okay i may need to save my two to three hundred dollars because of the grading i might need to save that and then now i gotta pray that he doesn't take me in 
for another four, five years because I'm gonna have more money saved than this policy gonna pay off. So that, that weighted risk factor is what really kicks in and all life insurance company, they look at how much risk they're willing to take in for the amount of premium that a person is gonna bring to the actual table. So I'm hoping that answers your question. The, the um, question on that part, are there um, more leniency with term than whole life as far as pre-existing or is all the level the same plane? It's, it's oh, here we go. It's a little bit more pre-existing depending, the, 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 when we talk about pre-existing, this is what I look at with pre-existing and it's tough to get insurance. When you start talking about the cancer side of it, when you start talking about the heart side of it, you've had a heart attack, aneurysm, things of that nature, right? Mm -hmm. um, the dia when you're, when you're a diabetic um, with on insulin, the needle side of it, those are like the big, those are, or it's, it's something like dialysis every day, right? Those are what gonna be your majors. That's when a company goes, whoa, a lot of risk here, a lot of risk here. And so that's where a whole life company would kick in and go, all right, I can charge you two, three, four hundred dollars for something that if you had good health, you would pay thirty, forty dollars for. And so whole life companies kick in because of the premium side, their their maximum premium could be a maximum, whatever that is. I've seen people pay, I've seen people pay eighteen hundred dollars a month for policies. I mean, it just depends on the person, their health, and then what type of policy. So when you ask that, whole life can play a little bit more with the pre-existing because they give you a minimum death claim amount. There's a minimum death benefit amount, but there's a maximum premium, right? And I don't know what that maximum is, right? Exactly. So is it if a person does have pre-existing condition, but is not in those lines that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. could they just apply because there yes. is no fee to apply there's none and, we, we, and and they just do the physical and you know so right I, you have nothing to lose by trying the second question i got a mm -hmm. private message where's okay. the, where's the 12 percent at that's what they want to know <laughs> good ah, good and so 12 percent. it depends on you one one thing is this it depends on you as an investor whether or not we're going to put you in a 12% portfolio because that's more of a high risk por portfolio. It's, it's strictly investing. And before we set your portfolio up, the first thing we do is we rate your tolerance level. Who are you as an investor? Mm -hmm. And then if you have years of and you're willing to take risk, then we can put you in mutual funds. Mm -hmm. So given mutual funds, we have portfolios that have returned 18, 20, 26%, but we can't really advertise or promote those. On average, we can talk about nine to 12%. So mute, there are mutual funds out there. I have portfolios, depending on who you are as an investor, where we can actually, we can put together a portfolio. My personal portfolio has done over 36% in mutual funds. But that's not one because I know it's not going to stay there that we talk about. But nine to twelve percent is out in the marketplace in a mutual fund portfolio, right? And so, what does a low low cost percentage look like? Like a low risk? About six. We're somewhere between four to six percent low risk, and then you're about six to eight, depending mid, and then you're about eight up on the actual high, right. Is it good to have a mixed portfolio, like some high and then some low? Mm -hmm. it, it is, and, and like I said, a lot of that is based on the actual investor because once we go take you through the questionnaire, it determines who you are. Right. Because a lot of people go, I like, I want high, I want 12%, I like, I'll, I'll take risk. And then we do the questionnaire, it's like, no, you are low and you don't like to lose no money, no money at stake. We want to put yours in almost like a checking account, right? Right. Make sure it's stable, right? So okay. you get a chance to weight that, right? Exactly. So Who now, you the, are as an investor. On the investor side, do you have access to your money anytime you want to, or is it locked up for a season like a CD at a bank does? Good. It's at, there we go. You can have either or. You just you decide. We we ask you the questions. Are you willing to are you willing to lock it in an annuity? Are you willing to put it in a mutual fund where you got access but you pay taxes? Or are you willing to put it in an actual IRA where your taxes is deferred? You pay no taxes, but growth. So it depends on the investor. We ask you, 
or do you want to have total access and it's like an upscale checking account which is a money market right okay right so we 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 do we determine all of that through the sit down conversation of what do you want to do with this money well if it's retirement money we're probably going to go with an with an actual Roth IRA if you're working Okay. And, then if, and if you are self-employed, we'll probably go with a self-employment IRA. Gotcha. Now, and everything is backed up with the FDIC. Mm. Say that one more time. Is it backed up by the, F mm -mm. the only the money market? Okay. Everything else is is in the actual marketplace. So this is going to be an investment. It's going to be like your four hundred one k. It's going to be like your actual IRA, your four hundred three bs. Right. It's going to be that that vehicle. Right. Exactly. Okay. So it's a pure investment. Y'all got any other questions? I know y'all big money folks. Come on, ask the questions. So yeah, I want to make sure y'all. I, I I talked a lot, but I want to make sure you're getting your question. And we don't have to just go insurance. If there's a financial question, and if I got the answer, um, I'll give you the answer. If not, we'll find it. Right. So last week we talked about budgeting and somewhat of credit repair, which I still have to convert into YouTube. You guys, I'm sorry. I've mm -hmm. been extremely busy over here. Um. So, oh, hold up, man. Mama D be getting on me, but when I don't send her a Zoom file, so she hadn't sent y'all the Zoom file. Oh, we gonna get on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is clapback time. Mine is fierce, not coach. Come on, come on. You don't see I got shine on here. I got back up. Listen, oh, you Kenya, do. I didn't but, see. I didn't, oh, okay. She's on here. All right. Good. Yeah, Kenya is my pit bull. She's like, don't come for Mama D. Oh, okay. Like, come All right, I'm sorry, come Kenya. on. <laughs> I'm outnumbered. Y'all numbered. Outnumbered. <laughs> so, um, um, what is the other question that I have? Um, so the question I have for you, when you, how did you know that it was your time to leave the job where you are? I have some people on here that are making some big shaking moves here. Mm. And they're getting ready to leave the job. How, how did you decide? Cause I, you know, left from one insurance company where I worked for five years and right. you could just feel your time was up. I was, did not want to go to work no more. I didn't love it anymore. It was such a resentment. And, right. and I was like, you know, God started talking about it's time for you to leave. I'm like, okay, let's right. give it a shot. It's the best thing I could have ever done That's and true. went independently. But what made you want to do what you did? Right. Um, all of, all of the above, what you just said, every entrepreneur, everyone that goes out into the entrepreneur side of it, well, let's back up. Everybody's got the seed inside of them. Right. It's just a matter of if you recognize it or ignore it. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is most of us go through life, ignoring our entrepreneurship spirit because life has not adjusted on us or challenged us enough. We hadn't been backed into a corner. We hadn't been done like corporate America do some, we've seen them do people. And so the days are, it's numbered where you, you will be challenged. And, and that is, it's just, it's just life period. And so understanding that I had ignored my entrepreneurship seed because life was going well. Uh, man, I, I was running somebody else's deal. They were paying me a healthy salary. I had a government credit card that I could swipe, a government car that I drove around, uh, you know, the, the great state of uh, South Carolina. And then along the way, the financial services industry walked in. I took a look at this particular business. I came here because I still needed extra money, and but I still ignored my entrepreneurship seat. I, because it was good to be safe with a job and then now play business, play business and then be safe, play business, be safe. And then all of a sudden uh, I was backed into a corner. The job changed on me. And so when the job changed on me, my entrepreneurship seed, I didn't know it. I was ignoring it. It popped out and was like, man, if you can be this good for somebody else, you could surely be this good 10 times that. better for yourself. Right. And so I shrink the, the, the little guy in me. And then I, I mean, I, I, I honestly lifted the giant in me and said, you know what, it's time for you to truly go full blast. And uh, it was just like yesterday. It was totally like yesterday where uh, I walked out of that particular office straight into to, to, to entrepreneurship full time and never looked back. I took the work ethic that I had learned though, that I did, I did, I did have a great work ethic. And I took that work ethic of getting up early and staying very late 
And then here we go, grinding in between. Now, you know, that side of it is there's, there's some people, you know, there's some people say they, they actually grind, you know, but do they really grind? Like my, my, my son often say, he said, I, be, I grind. And I'm like, you, you don't know what the grind oh, is. Yes. <laughs> right. The right. grind is the grind. And mm -hmm. so that side of it is grinding for that first 18 months. You know, it was, it was a, it wasn't a, you know, you can't, you can't serve fear and faith at the same time. It's, you've oh, got to have faith. That's and, true. and so what I did was I used the ounce of fear to enable me. And then man, my faith seed kicked in and 18 months later, I was six figures, six figures in the, in the financial services industry and never looked back 18 years later never looked back the best thing i ever i've ever done is to be my own my worst boss right. you got me because i am a tough boss on myself mm -hmm. and, and that side of it is to be able to to wake up when i want to wake up but that's normally early to go to bed when i want to go to bed but that's normally is, is late late you got me but to enjoy it you know the greatest thing about it kenya is my actual Friday is any day of the week. The only day of the week I don't alter is my Sunday. Everything else, I could change it around. What people do on Saturday, I do it on Monday. And so that has been my life for almost 16 years. Is that I get a chance to I get a chance in the middle of the day to go out on, on Lake Murray, man, because I pay the price of an entrepreneur with no boss and, and jump on my actual boat and stroll that lake, man, for two, three hours and not have to ask anybody. My kid gets sick, I don't gotta worry about asking a boss. It's just that's the price we pay with entrepreneurship. But given that price, it equals an enormous reward. So I would, I mean, that side of it is just everyone has an actual entrepreneurship seed. Right. It's just a matter of we ignoring it right. or we finally now recognize it. And then how what kind of water were you putting on it? Were you really watering that 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 seed while it was in you? Because man, when it comes out, I'm telling you, it's gonna look like Mama D. You got me? That's it. I'm it's okay. going to look like a Kevin Brown. It's going to look like that side is very important, man, to be empowered, right? To do and be, right? And I, I think what the most important thing is for entrepreneurship also is to know when to go. Mm. Because I would not be sitting at my desk right here in this office running folks and running this and running that if it wasn't for the right time because I needed right. all of that knowledge. But if I would have known what mm. I know now, you know wow. what I'm saying? But it wasn't time yet because I but, didn't have right. that knowledge. Right. So you, you have to it. get the knowledge and the understanding Stand. and mm -hmm. then get that seed to grow. And right. then you'll know because it becomes uncomfortable to stay where you at. You True. know, when you get sick True. of being sick and tired of sick and tired, right. you know. And the thing is this, God always moves people, places and things to make his will come to pass. Mm. So, and but we have to be in a position that we can jump. That's right. A lot of times people jump, but they don't present the whole heart. And we talk about this a lot in the group is right. about excellence. You know, right. a lot of, especially black businesses, they fail right. because right. they throw it out all willy nilly. Mm -hmm. That's Instead true. of praying about it, get direction, follow somebody like coach Brown right. or Cheyenne or mama D or Kenya and right. learn from the ones that are trailblazing, find out what they're doing right. Instead of, getting pride for us like i mean i could do that no you can't you don't right. even have the excellence right. mindset yet right. you know and right. so we have to get into the right position so when we're going to give our best shot then we can shoot it but if you're not going to give it your best shot don't shoot it all until you're ready until you're ready that's until it. you're ready and i mean that's so important did y'all have any more questions i mean i love that can't serve faith and fear at the same time Y'all know he's on our street. Don't play with us. You know he's on our street. Mm -hmm. this is good. Have any questions? Y'all come on. Ask, ask Coach Brown, man. Man, he is good. Yeah, what, there you go. Entrepreneurship. There you go. Money questions. Right. Mm. Man, wealth, wealth building. I don't know. You're right. Y'all got me on here. Right. Uh-huh. And good. that's it. So we got about 15 people. We're about up to 20. Mm -hmm. I know we have different. We got people from... Let me see. We got, ooh, Lord Qua is in 
um, Quiet, Ohio, Quiet yeah. in Ohio, and so is City. She's in Ohio, mm -hmm. and Miss Frida, she's in Philly, I believe, and Vanessa, she's in Alabama. Brittany is in Ohio. Jeff, where you at? I don't even forgot where you at. And then Kenya, she and Kelsey is in Ohio. Lee is here in South Carolina at the same time I met with Cheyenne. Okay. And then Kenya. So who is Desiree? Spell the same, but a Z. Yes. Yeah. Desiree, okay. she's in the military. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And Tifa, she's in, um, oh my God, she's in Pennsylvania. But okay. I can't remember where she's at. Awesome. But um, yeah, Des, she's in the Army. I mm. think. Right, Dash, you're in the army, right? Um, and Amanda, um, you know, she just joined with us, so she's part of us. And so okay. she's in Georgia, but she is still housed in South Carolina. Okay, good. Yeah. Right, good. So we got some good folks on here. Did you guys have any other questions? Eva, did you have anything? Kels, Leah, anybody? Anybody, anybody on the call that who has a financial advisor? Jeff is out, out there in Missouri. In Missouri. Jeff yeah. is actually an insurance agent now. Okay, he's a, he's an insurance. Where's Jeff? Jeff is. Jeff is. He's in okay, Missouri. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. okay, he's gotcha. actually doing a transition soon. Transition. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, good man. So okay, good. And so all right, so no questions means we got it. That I did. I've done somewhat of of a pretty decent job going through it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just man, I just appreciate y'all having me again in in the midst of uh, this particular greatness tonight. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, what the, the thing that I, I often say is that if we got one person that have learned something, then we've unlocked it. We, we passed on uh, a part of his particular word, man. So somebody got a chance to hear it and right. hopefully and hopefully we'll be able to move through it. Right. Coach, and what's your cash app? Right. And, and apply it. Who's cash app? Yours. I don't need anything at all. I just, I just needed, I just needed faces to show up. That's it. Long as I'm talking. Man. Faces are here. The faces are here. The faces are in the spaces and the places. Uh, yeah, you, I'm going to, I'm going to stop recording. I do have, um, first of all, thank